Okay, great. Well, John uh, takes that marvelous video away. Um, let me just quickly uh, introduce our, our uh, student participants. If we want to start at this end and just give a quick introduction, who you are, what grade you're in, uh, and uh, we'll move along the line from there. Hi, um, I'm Dhruv Kumar. Uh, I go to St. Francis High School in Mountain View, and uh, I'm a freshman. Uh, my name is Yvonne Pandev. I'm uh, a senior at Santa Clara High School. I'm Madison Martin. I'm a sophomore at Westmont. I'm Erica Paisley, and I'm a senior at Prospect. I'm Charlie Pyle, and I am a seventh grader at Monroe Middle School. I'm Sarah Sawatsky, and I'm an eighth grader at Moreland Middle School. I'm Sanjana Githeri, and I'm an eighth grader at Moreland Middle School. Okay, great. And these brave souls are here to help us understand the thinking and the mindset of this generation that we've been describing. Uh, let's start off with a question. So we've done a lot of talking uh, prior to you taking the stage, and you got to watch it all. Um, Anything that you thought particularly applied to you versus didn't apply to you? What did you agree with and what did you disagree with in terms of the information that you just saw us talking about? Go for it. I just wanted to say, like, at school, that's where I make most of my friends. And if I learned online, then I wouldn't really have many friends. Ah, uh, there. Because I wouldn't really meet people much. Okay. Yeah, you would have friends online, but it's not the same thing as having like physical friends that you can like go to their house and like hang out. Okay, great. Any other thoughts on what you've seen so far? Um, I really like the point that uh, I think I think John made this point, which is that um, uh, when I'm browsing online or studying, I I always find myself kind of going between uh, at least ten sources of information. You know, either working between Wikipedia and Microsoft Word and uh, you know, I always have music playing either on BMP3 or YouTube, and but I, I really related to that point that he made. So, mm -hmm. yeah, indeed. Any others? Um, well, I liked what the last speaker said um, about putting that new technology inside the classroom, because um, like all through middle school and now, all the teaching is done on PowerPoints, and like the teacher goes through a PowerPoint on a big screen, and you pretty much take notes on that. That's how it's been for me. And so with that new technology that he was talking about, I think that's a pretty good idea. Okay, great. Uh, let's talk a little bit about technology, perhaps. Um, you know, it seems to, to us that you guys are just uh, uh, cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs when it comes to technology. You love everything and anything that comes out. Um, is that true? Tell us about your relationship with technology, the things that you like. Tell us about when you kind of feel like uh, technology perhaps has gone too far and you sort of set it to the side. So let's hear about you and your relationships with technology. Well, um, I actually, my favorite item is probably either the iPhone or the iPad. I just love them. You can, you know, touch them and pretty much do whatever you want with them. And, um, but when you talk about going too far, I mean, I like all that virtual stuff, but, you know, instead of having to do all that virtual stuff, I would rather do it in reality. And so I love the iPad, but I don't want it to become like a full 3D glasses thing. So. Okay. Uh, my relationship, I, I have a very close relationship with uh, technology, um, especially when it comes to my schoolwork, um, especially with all my AP classes that I'm taking this year. What me and my classmates tend to do is just to make a Facebook group and everybody from that period or that class, you know, we just kind of get onto that group and um, we channel just huge amounts of information back and forth and uh, it's really convenient for me and that's why I use it because, um, you know, it's usually my friends who find certain articles and pieces of information for me, um, you know, they kind of leave it on the page and I do the same for them and um, it, it really cuts down on time and I think it really uh, accelerates the learning, the learning process, which is important for me because I'm like always swamped with homework and stuff, so. Okay, great. Um, what other thoughts? I use the internet for most of my researching, and that's like my primary source for researching, so I think it's important. But yeah, that, I, I couldn't live without the internet. Sarah? Um, yeah, I agree with that. I use like the internet a lot for research also, and then I use like Facebook pages like that. Um, to talk to friends if I have questions, yeah. Okay. Anyone else want to dive in? Sure. Um, I think it's a really good idea to use Facebook for like getting together to figure out what to do. But I think it's gone too far when people don't know how to communicate to each other through like real life. Like I have friends that don't know how to do that. They can't 
do anything personally, it's got to be like online or texting. Hmm. Does anybody else agree or disagree with that? Do you think we've gone too far? Does anybody feel like they're a slave to Facebook some days and they've just got to keep checking what's going on with their friends in case something's going on? I feel like I used to be. Yeah? <laughs> How did it change? Yeah, when did um, it change? Well, it, it just changed for me when um, my parents and I took a, a short trip to Barcelona where I didn't have constant access to Facebook. And I spent, I spent a week away from it and, you know, like, while I was away from it, I was always kind of like looking around for cafes and Wi-Fi zones like, oh, I want to check my notifications. And but then when I got back home and, you know, I had Facebook again kind of abundantly available to me, I just kind of figured, what was I so excited about? It's like I, I, I wasn't actually missing out on that much and all the information that I need, uh, I, I don't kind of wait around on Facebook to see it. I just kind of initiate contact with that person usually by just, just calling them, texting them usually. Okay. I see a, an ad campaign for Barcelona tourism. Here. <laughs> Disconnect from Facebook, come to Barcelona. Anyone else? Facebook fatigue? Are you, is it starting to wear you down? Staying up to date? No. Oh. Well, that's good. Does anybody have trouble sleeping because their cell phone is beeping and, bl and blinging in the middle of the night? No. Okay, good. No. <laughs> All right. Well, so you've got your choice of one technology. I'm sending you off to a deserted island, and you've got one thing you can take with you. Go ahead and tell me what that one thing's going to be. I would probably take um, an iPhone because, I mean, it's, I'm on an island, right? So I want communication. I can call anyone. I can text anyone. I can check everything I want. And then also it provides entertainment with all the apps, and you can go online. And it's small enough to fit in your pocket. I just love that. So if you had like an iPod or an iPad, would you be able to have uh, internet access? Oh, you already with the conditions, Charlie. <laughs> All right, Charlie. Because I wouldn't really want it if it didn't have any internet. Cause All right, you've got it. It's like the same as the phone, except it has more to offer. Welcome to Wi-Fi Island. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'd probably take an iPad, probably. iPad then, okay. Who else? Um, I would take a computer because... I could um, communicate uh, with Facebook, plus I could be online. Okay. You could Skype. You could do everything with a laptop. Yeah. Okay, great. Yeah, that kind of makes me want me to change my computer, so <laughs> <laughs> I'm changing. <laughs> okay, who else? I would take my iPhone as well, because I can do everything on it, pretty much. Yeah. And it fits in your pocket, so that when you have to run from the tiger... Did I mention the tigers on <laughs> Wi-Fi Island? The <laughs> They're everywhere. Okay, great. All right, so one of the other questions that we talked about asking you was, um, what technologies do you see your parents use that you think are really lame and ridiculous? Oh, the landline home phone. Okay, great. <laughs> Why is that? Because we have cell phones with our contacts. Why do we need to punch in every number <laughs> in order to call our friends? Right. So inefficient. Okay, what else? Uh, I, I think wanted... it's really lame when my parents use uh, Xbox Connect. <laughs> really? <laughs> you know, dancing with Lady Gaga and whatnot. But um, <laughs> no, um, I, m my dad is actually a very, very tech savvy guy, and I don't. And I actually get most of my um, it, uh, technology preferences from him. So I don't really think it, anything he does is lame. So. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, that's that's customary for your generation. You don't mind your parents, except when they dance in front of the Connect. I, I, yeah. I can. <laughs> I, I get with that. What else? What else is a lame technology that only old people use? I wanted to go on with what Sarah said. In the landline, you can't use it outside, so a cell phone is much more convenient. <laughs> and like sometimes when the wind blows the telephone lines over or whatever, you can't use it in the cell phones. <laughs> cell phone always works. Okay. Well, unless, as myself, I'm an AT&T user living in Manhattan, in which case it doesn't work so well. But. Okay, who else has got some ideas on lame adult technology that won't last another decade? Well, um, I don't really like it, the, the desktop PC, mm -hmm. because, I mean, I just think it's big and clunky and it's brown or gray or, you know, I, I find it disgusting now. Yeah. Um, it's it's going to go away soon. I mean, the Mac, it's it's all right because it, it's more, <laughs> ma it's like modern kind of now, but um, that, that'll go away eventually too. Mm -hmm. In face of, what do you think's next? iPad. Yeah. Okay, great. Any other thoughts? 
Sure. Well, I would agree with the fact that he was saying, except the iPad can hold so much less storage and stuff. Like, the memory is nothing compared to one of those old clunky things, which is why the Mac is probably better suited, but still. Yeah, I would agree with getting rid of desktops because why do we have desktops if we have laptops? Because you can use your laptop at home and somewhere else. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Um, I'd like to interject that um, some of my friends are really um, uh, ardent online gamers, and they are, and the majority of them prefer uh, desktop computer just because um, it's more powerful. Yeah, they're always going on about you know graphics cards and whatnot, but and apparently they're much more. Um, uh, conducive to online gaming. Yep. So, yeah, among the PC manufacturers, the last bastion of, of uh, desktop computing is the gamers. Yeah. Okay. Just a quick show of hands. Have any Have any of you ever used a phone book? Familiar with a phone book? I can describe the concept for you. It's a pre-Google device. Yeah. <laughs> well, when I first found out about the phone book, I called it the stalker book because you could get the name, then the phone number, and sometimes the address of anyone in the area, and I thought that was kind of funny. Yeah. I would say the phone book is my last resort after I've checked everything online and asked my parents and all that stuff. Okay. I found the phone book in my family room, and I didn't even know it existed still. <laughs> and, and I looked through it, and I found my friend's last names, and I was just like, whoa, their names are in here. <laughs> Crazy, yeah. <laughs> um, how about this one? It's a chestnut. A payphone. Does anybody know what that is? Have you used one? No. Yeah, poor payphone guys. They, they don't get any love. <laughs> okay, so then uh, I guess in terms of technologies, um, there's, there's folks here that, that have talked about education. I think that's a great topic. Uh, how, do you use how do you use technology in the classroom, if at all? And, and from what you saw today, where do you see the opportunities to kind of bring the thing that you clearly love so very much um, you know, into the classroom? Well, um, going back to the PowerPoints thing, that's pretty much the only way I actually learn. And so if they could bring that in more, except with each student like having maybe their own device which they could see the whole lesson on and take it home and use that for notes instead of actually taking down notes with a pencil, you know, I would like that actually a lot better. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that you can like type on a computer in class a lot faster than you can take notes. Mm -hmm. So it would give you more time to listen and like interpret what the person's saying rather than just like not listening and just trying to write down everything they say. Hmm. Okay. How else can we use technology better in the classroom? Let me, let me uh, ask you a little bit about your relationship with video content. Do you see much video in, in the classroom? Our teacher doesn't play it much. She does like PowerPoints occasionally, but most of it's just pictures. Mm -hmm. I do watch a lot of video, but not in the classroom, like mm. out of school. Um, sometimes my history teacher shows us um, different types of videos that they're just like a good way to like review what we've learned. Uh, my biology teacher uses um, little snippets of educational videos uh, yeah. a lot in his lectures. Um, my civics teacher uses YouTube videos a lot of, you know, um, like GOP candidates, for example, to kind of show us, you know, this is what they're doing, this is what uh, they're up to. Um, yeah. So between reading and watching, what would you rather do, watch or read? Watch. Yeah. yeah. Watch. It's more, like you said, entertaining. It's just something for your mind to do rather than just stare at words. And I think it's much more effective again. because um, you're a lot less preoccupied with kind of writing and um, just kind of getting down the information so you know you'll have it later, but you can just kind of sit back and watch. And kind of... Okay, great. Well, listen, um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stop asking questions for now. I have a bunch more for you, okay. but I want to open it up a little bit. Let's start maybe with the, um, with the other participants in our uh, panel discussion. Um, do any of our, uh, our esteemed colleagues from the, from the first panel have any questions they want to ask these uh, bright kids? I'm, I'm just going to repeat that. If you had the opportunity to design your dream classroom with any of the technologies and tools, tell us what your dream classroom would look like. Is that close enough? Exactly. Great. My so, dream. Oh. Yeah. All right. So um, I would 
First, I would have a smart board in the front of the room. It's like, um, it's basically like a screen just like that, except it's touch, and so you can, you know, move through slides just like that. And then um, also at each desk have little, little charging stations for uh, the devices that you're taking notes on and reading. And then um, that would make it a lot less boring, I think. Okay. What other ideas? You had one at the end. Oh, yeah. So, like, the desks would be touchscreen, kind of. So, like, the video that's on the board would be on the desktop, cool. so you wouldn't have to look up, and the teacher wouldn't even have to display it. They just talk about it, and the slide's moving. Yeah, and going off what she said, if you had it on your desk, you could, like, if you didn't understand something, you could probably go back and maybe rewind, and then that would help a lot. Oh, great. Jeez. Hey, we can quit our jobs here. You guys are great product development types, so let's keep going. Let's hear more. I would also have laptops in the classroom for use. Yeah. Okay. Just have music. Hmm? Sorry. <laughs> Charlie, I'm sure you have ideas. Well, my idea was kind of frivolous. It was just a long room that has like uh, their own laptops slash desktops on each side of it, with a teacher and like a big projector slash master like computer that can control all of them, and then had it display what was on the computer like. All, every computer had something displayed on it. And then they all had like uh, a typing screen right under them for them to type on like a laptop and then there's a desktop above it. Hmm. Okay, great. What other ideas do we have for the, for the ideal, the perfect classroom? I would have a speaker to plug in music, which actually some classrooms use, but it's good for like if you're just writing and the teacher isn't talking, it's good to be able to like, listen to music while you're writing if it doesn't bother the students. Right, you multitaskers, you. Um, kids nowadays, you go into their bedroom and what you notice is that they've got you know, a textbook open on the, pay, uh, on, the, on the bed in front of them. Their laptop has three iChat sessions, 16 tabs in a Windows browser. They've got their iPod, they're listening to music. You ask them what's going on and they say, nothing. <laughs> That's zero for them. Anything beyond that is plus. Too much to explain. <laughs> <laughs> okay, great. Uh, is, that, is that good enough, Lisa, or do you, do you want to probe on any of that? chat room kind of where if you had questions then you can ask your classmates and if your classmates still didn't understand it then you can ask your teacher too hmm. peer to peer I like what you were saying about the electronic uh, school but I think so like what you said about like keeping physical friends like every Friday or Monday you have a day at school which is virt like virtually the same thing as when you're at home but you're there with people are you saying like a technology day and then a non-technology day? Like four days of the week you're at home on school, and then the fifth day you'd meet up at school and just have a regular day. Uh -huh. We need a lot less schools. We could rotate, right? Monday's <laughs> your day, Tuesday's his. Yeah. I think it's actually harder to communicate with people online, because me and my friends, sometimes we do projects online, and it's really hard to communicate, so we just call each other and try talking. Yeah, it's a lot easier. It's it's faster to say words on like a cell phone rather than um, on like typing. Mm -hmm. Okay. Great. Any other questions? Yeah, go ahead, Eric. Yeah, and that um, that last question kind of led perfectly into mine. So, coming from from the ed tech space, there's a lot of companies that are popping up. that are saying, "Gee golly, kids love Facebook, so we should recreate Facebook and put it in the classroom." And I guess the way I kind of look at that, and I'm out of high school, but I am also working in the space, so I do kind of have a biased view. Um, I guess we could have chosen to do that. But my, my view on this is kind of like telling an adult, gee golly, you like going on Facebook. This year, we're going to revolutionize how you do taxes. We're going to throw in a whole bunch of social features, and you're going to love it. You know, and that's, that's, that's kind of how I feel about it. And so I want to, I want to, I want to hear from, from you guys, because you're not, not necessarily a full generation separation from me. Um, but I, I, it's surprising kind of like the differences of the answers that I would expect from like kids my age. Um, so yeah, so that's my question. Would you, would you feel that having a social network, and like I think Facebook literally in your classroom would be better, beneficial or would it be a detriment 
to how you learn and how you collaborate? It might be a detriment because rather than going and like talking to someone, you're uh, on the computer or on whatever you're using to use Facebook, and it could turn into more like chatting with friends rather than like you really like trying to learn. Yeah, I actually think it would be pretty cool, except um, I would lose a lot of the face-to-face -face stuff. I think that makes it a lot faster and a lot easier. I mean, I love to do stuff on the computer, right? But um, in that kind of a situation, I would rather talk face-to-face -face than type. And I think that where there's a need for students to collaborate together on, um, on you know, whatever project they need to collaborate on, uh, they always take the initiative that... Uh, that they would need to take to um, to work uh, together through groups on Facebook. Um, just yesterday, for example, I spent about what, six, seven hours, um, you know, like reading a constant stream of posts uh, on a private group between me and four of my friends. We had a group project together, and between Facebook and Google Docs, um, you know, I mean, we we basically took the initiative that we need to implement technology and make it easier for ourselves. Um, so. Okay, great. <laughs> can conclude that. Any other thoughts? Facebook in the classroom, does it have a place or should it be kept out? I personally think it should be kept out because with everything that's going on, it's too like distracting. And I think that if you want to work on a group, Google Docs would be much better because then it's just you and a couple other people and it's not like, oh my gosh, look, you got their hair cut and oh my gosh, you got a new pair of shoes and oh my god, their relationship with that person again and then that doesn't belong in the classroom, but if you're working on a project, I think a different website would be much better for that. Yeah, it could become like confusing between chatting like for homework and going and liking someone's pictures. It could be too confusing and, um, what's the word? Distracting. Distracting, yes. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I also think that it kind of ruined the purpose of social networking. <laughs> Because it's meant to like talk with your friends and have fun or whatever. It's not really meant to learn. Right. Yeah, especially when the person's like sitting across from you in a chair on their computer. <laughs> well, it seems dumb to me, but uh, but trust me, all of my millennial employees would rather chat with each other from three feet away than actually turn around and talk. <laughs> I guess they're too busy. Go ahead, Kathleen. Uh, I had a question about your entertainment habits in terms of how much time you spend watching TV versus how much time you spend um, watching videos on YouTube for fun, things like that? I think it really depends on um, what, what material I want to watch. There's uh, a lot of TV shows that I enjoy, and you know, I just record them on the DVR. So, um, but a lot of my favorite TV shows, or one in particular, I, I'm a huge fan of Top Gear, but I only have basic cable. So I just watch uh, whatever I could find on YouTube from that program. Um, but I also use online Netflix a lot to go through, um, like if I get particularly hooked on one series, I'm just going to go through like entire seasons of it in a row on instant Netflix. Um, but most of my, uh, TV shows and, you know, drama series and whatnot, I, I get that just directly from cable. Yeah. I would actually uh, go along with what he was saying. Like I would, I would only use it when something's not available on TV. Yeah. Um, like, I like TV because it's big and it's simple, but if I can't find a show that I like and that I want to watch, then I would just go online and do it instead. So that's probably when I would use it more. Yeah, exactly. So, like, if I had a show and I forgot to record it and I missed it, um, then I would definitely go online, but I'd rather watch my show, like, on the big screen. <laughs> uh, TV was my main, like, form of, inter not internet use, entertainment until roughly December when I found some guy on YouTube who's, a lot of people find this really dumb, but I watch a guy play a video game and he talks while he does it. And I just found it really, he was funny. And ever since then, I've just kind of, like, it brought me to the YouTube world and I watch a lot of YouTube nowadays. Like, I watch TV, but definitely YouTube more. Yeah. Okay, no other takers? want to say something? Yeah, I was going to say, most people, um, I read this in an article, and most people's attention can't be held on an online video for more than like two to three minutes. I think that it's much 
like more interesting to watch on TV because it's bigger and you can have like a plot line and everything, not just a bunch of dumb jokes in three minutes. Yeah, I agree with that. I definitely find it easier to just like sit down on the couch and watch a full show than like watching a video and then changing the video and then watching another video. Okay. Uh, Kathleen, if you don't mind me jumping in, what are you doing while you're sitting on the couch watching TV? You're, you're doing nothing else or are there other things going on simultaneously? Half the time I'm actually surfing yeah. online. Um, y- you know, not, not studying obviously while I'm watching TV, but you know, just kind of casually browsing whatever might be of interest to me at the time. Um, if not that, I'm just eating or yeah. yeah. So, okay, laptop on your lap, TV in front of you, and you're sort of switching focus between the two. Yeah. While the show's on, you're looking at your laptop, or yeah. it's just during commercial breaks? Yeah, I, I mean, especially if it's a rerun, and I kind of know what happens, but it's still pleasant to have on and to see it again. Um, you know, I mean, pretty much half of my TV usage seems to be like that, so. Oh. Okay. Who else? What are you doing while you're watching TV? Um, sitting, eating. Talking, texting. 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 Yes. Oh, yeah. Here it is. Okay, so let's talk about that. Who are you texting with while you're watching TV? Friends. Okay. Yeah. Are you, and, and what's the topic of these text messages while you're watching TV? <laughs> what could be so compelling? Are you talking about the TV show or are you just having a completely different random conversation about other things? I, I find do. most. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. Right. It depends if you're both watch, watching the show. Like, if I was watching a show and my friend was, then I would talk about it. But if, like, my friend wasn't, then I would talk about something else. Interesting. Go ahead. Um, I almost never watch TV shows together with my friends, so my, most of my texting, text communication, I'd say, is uh, uh, 50% is just a string of dumb jokes, and the other 50% is uh, discussion about, um, you know, uh, do we have a test tomorrow in biology, blah, blah, blah. So it's between school and uh, kind of random, non, non, non sweet, non sequent jokes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, great. Who else? What, are you texting while you're watching? And if you're texting, what are you texting about? Um, the only time my texts really relate to what I'm watching is when I'm watching sports and we're all watching games hmm. together. Okay. Okay, great. Well, certainly that's a huge trend. Um, and, and the stats are definitely the case that uh, folks are doing more than one thing at the same time and, and texting is a big part of it. Okay, uh, any other questions? Yeah? How do you find what you want to watch on TV? Are you using a guide or are you using online sources? Um, on TV or on the computer? On the TV, when, you, when you're going to, f- when, when you're going to watch something on TV, which it sounds like you all prefer that if it's available there, how do you determine what's there and if it is available there for you to watch it? Uh, a lot of times um, I browse through the channels and then like also when you get like your TV plan you get like the packet that says the channels and then like usually I know like a general like what shows on what channel um, so then I flip to that channel and see if my show's on. Pretty much uh, what I do is um, I go on guide I look through all the channels that I like or that I watch a lot, and uh, if there's nothing interesting, then I go to, the, my, to my DVR, and then I look for shows there that I've recorded or that I like and I want, I'm in the mood for. And if there's nothing there, then I would switch to the computer and watch something online. Yeah, I agree with that. Okay. Um, I think I actually get most of my, uh, my new TV shows from my parents. Um, recently, uh, they became uh, big fans of the Big Bang Theory, and so I kind of adopted that, you know, because we have dinner together in front of the TV, so I started liking that show. Um, about a couple of days ago, they discovered Mad Men, which is like a series on HBO, I think, and, and I'm starting to like that now, too. Um, yeah. Yeah, I agree with that, because my parents watch the Big Bang Theory, too, and I started watching it, and I love it. <laughs> watching. That's great. So, yep. so definitely a cross-generational viewing. Yeah. Sorry, I cut you off. Go ahead. The TV shows that I watch, I mostly find because I watch like the same channels, and then if I see a commercial for a good TV show, I DVR it, and if I like it, I'll continue watching it. Huh. Oh yeah, and another thing is like when you're on a guide and you see a show you like, you can hit like record new and record all, so that's really helpful so that it's easy to like watch a show later that you want to watch. Okay, and and I think it's interesting to mention that I see a lot of advertisements for new TV shows. You know, just kind of 
between whatever it is that I'm watching, but I've never been compelled enough by any commercial to say, okay, I want to record that. And then I go to the guide and I find that show and I say, okay, schedule that for later. I've never been compelled to do that hmm. from any advertising. Okay. How about when you're at school? Do you ever talk to friends and they say, oh, you know, you should really watch this show or that show? All the time. Yeah? Because, yeah. like, oh, you ahead. and your friends, you usually have the same personality, kind of. And you guys are usually alike. So when they tell you to watch a show, then you usually, like, tell them what you feel about it and then, yeah. Okay, so imagine, it's going to take all your powers of imagination. I'm a kid your age and I've just come to this country. What shows would you immediately recommend that I watch? The Big Bang Theory. Modern Family. <laughs> Scrubs. Oh, Scrubs. SpongeBob. SpongeBob. Oh, yeah. Okay. Sorry, I missed you two because you spoke at the same time. Go ahead. Uh, the Office and The Simpsons. Okay. Uh, Scrubs. Scrubs. Hmm. Anything was that crap. <laughs> Nothing? All right. Okay, what other questions? Go ahead. Just yell it out. And uh, in the series, I mean, you see a lot of jokes revolving around the uh, scientific terms and uh, educational stuff. So has that prompted you to, you know, uh, uh, look up uh, th those terms in the internet and see what they are really joking about? Okay, so for the scientific terms, I took physics honors last year, so I kind of understand what they're talking about sometimes. And it is pretty funny. I don't, like, have to go look it up, though. When doesn't excite me that enough that I have to go, oh my gosh, what is this? Yeah, my brother, um, he's older, so he understands a lot of the terms. So if I don't, I ask him, and then like, I realize why it's funny. <laughs> <laughs> I think I have that same reverse relationship. It's not that like, I totally don't get it, and, and I feel like I want to understand the jokes by doing more research. I think what draws me to the show in the first place is that I get maybe I don't know, a half of whatever it is they're talking about, and because I could draw that relationship to the show, it, it engages me more. So. Yeah. Okay. Great. Well, um, we're sort of winding it down, but uh, are there any other questions? I mean, this is this is you know like having your own focus group in your own hip pocket. Any other questions for our youth panel? Um, I got a couple questions. One pertaining to studying, how you guys do that. Uh, if you have an assignment and you're at home and you're working on it, you know your friends have the same assignment and you're struggling with it. Uh, how do you resolve that? Do you ask your parents for help? Do you immediately turn online? And in the same time, do you guys use video chat or video conferencing or any kind of video source to be able to communicate with your friends when you're doing that? Well, I turn to texting when it comes to um, <clears throat> like science and stuff. Like, I, I, all my smarter friends like have like honor science. If I don't understand something, like they're the first person I text. Like I'm like, oh my gosh, how do you understand? How do you do this? But other than that, like, I don't usually, like, go to my parents just because, like, I think my, fr cause my friends are in the same class as me. But I think also think that video chat is really helpful because then you can, like, hear, you can, like, talk to each other and it's not, like, going to use up all your minutes on your phone. Yeah, my first, the first thing I would do would be texting because along with what you said, like, your friends know the problems and, like, what you're doing. Then the next thing I would do would be ask my parents because they usually understand. And then the, uh, the next thing I'd do would ask my brother, would be asking my brother, because he's older, yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I go straight to my dad, because he's usually home, because they do my homework at night. And he gets it right 85, 90% of the time. It, if he doesn't <laughs> get it right, I call my friend, and he's really, really smart. <laughs> <laughs> you, gotta, um, you gotta beef up a little bit there, Ken. Yeah. For me too. Um, Texting is always my first line of, uh, you know, kind of reaching out to friends and questioning. Uh, personally, I've never used video chat to uh, try and clear up some homework. Um, Interesting. Yeah, so um, usually if, if I'm having trouble finding something and I can't find it in a textbook or in my notes, um, the first thing I would do would be to go online and uh, look it up. And if I still can't find it, then I would probably go check uh, to see if one of my friends has it. And if they don't have it, then I would probably skip that and then ask my teacher the next day. Yeah, along with that, if I like can't get it in any way, I'll usually email my teacher because um, I don't text my teachers. <laughs> so I'd email them, and then if they don't respond, then at least they know that I like what I need help on. Oh, great. Good thinking. 
Uh, one of my teachers actually gives us his cell phone number and we're allowed to text him whenever we want or call him to ask him questions. Wow. Okay, and then just real quick, another question about how you, if you guys could design, let's say you have a room in your house where it's just yours and you can do whatever you want, um, TV-wise, obviously keep video games out of it, but do you guys use connected TVs? Is that something that's desirable to you, or is just a straight TV with a satellite or cable signal sufficient? Um. Could you just define connected TVs? I yeah, saw a okay. couple of confused I was books. I was wondering if that, I wanted to see if, if they even knew what that meant. Okay, okay, so connected TVs, TV that has Wi-Fi connection on it, and you can have apps on it, um, kind of like a large iPad, if you will. Uh, but it's, uh, you can get video from other sources as well. Um. I would Can you repeat the question? Oh, so do, do yeah. you ever use connected TVs? Well, yeah, and I guess the question is, is if you guys had your, if you could design your own little kid room, <laughs> for lack of a better term, uh, would you guys prefer to have a device like that, like a connected TV, or would you just, is just using a regular TV with a, cat, a cable or satellite signal what you want? I find that if I need to, um, I, I have used a connected TV before, and um, you know, looked at either YouTube videos or, or you know, went to Netflix on it. Um, but I find that if I want to search for videos, it's much more convenient for me just to use um, a laptop or a desktop because uh, the interface between the television um, isn't really well suited for internet browsing, I think. And because of that, I just prefer basic cable and DVRs. I think both ways are good because um, it's easy to go from watching TV to using a laptop and for internet, but then it's also great to be able to use internet on the TV. Yeah, so um, with the TV, I would rather just watch TV on it. And um, like for internet, I don't like using it on the TV because I find it slow and complicated to use. So maybe if there was something faster and simpler that I could use on the TV for internet, that would be better. And also the lack of good quality stuff like um, HD or at least not blurry um, video, then I would probably use it more. But because of the lack of those things, I use internet videos on the computer and I watch television on the television. So what do you guys think about DVDs? And would you ever buy one, like buy a movie? Or if you wanted to watch a movie, would you go rent one? Would you download one? Go to Netflix? And if you were to buy a DVD, why would you want one? And I would... Oh, go ahead. Yeah. All right. The main reason I would buy a DVD is if I really like a movie, and then if you stream it or download it, you generally only have it for a certain amount of time. Mm -hmm. But if you want to watch the movie again, I'd like to have it purchased, just so you have that available. Yeah, the first thing I would do would be go to Netflix, and if they don't have it to watch instantly, I would order it. And once I'd watched it, um, if it was a good movie, then I'd do what he said and buy the DVD. I personally think DVDs are like really good for like a series of TV shows because they're not always on on demand or Netflix or whatever you have, and they're not like available like Redbox or whatever. And I think that's a really good reason to buy a DVD, like other than like whatever else you watch or something like that. I really can't see myself using DVDs or buying DVDs for myself, um, mainly because I, I could pretty much find what, I, in my experience, whatever movie I wanted to find, I do somewhere online. And from that source, I could usually download it. And that's my way of possessing it. That's my way of having it at the ready whenever I need it to go. So I, I can't really imagine myself buying a DVD. Nope, he answered my question. I was just, I, I was going to ask, you know, with no, uh, no judgments in the room if something isn't on Netflix or something, say a movie that's out. Do you guys find yourself often going to other sites um, that may have quote unquote bootleg copies or something other like that to find your sources? Again, you won't get in trouble, I promise. <laughs> Pers I have, all right, go ahead. I'm okay. time. Personally, I don't like to do stuff like that. So I would just like wait for, uh, I guess, legal way to do it. If you're saying doing it like illegally, like like just finding like Benning for instance, one, one YouTube will have like you know watch Crazy Love Part One of Ten or whatever, and you kind of like click 
<laughs> Depends how bored I am. <laughs> <laughs> how much time I have. Yeah. Like, if, if I have a lot of time, nothing to do, and this movie seems interesting to me, I'll do that. I, uh, a, buddy of my, a buddy of mine and I, a um, couple weeks ago, we were hanging out, and we really wanted to see... Uh, Fast and Furious, uh, one of the Fast and Furious series, but um, we couldn't find the the, epi- uh, the specific show that we wanted. Um, so we couldn't find it on Netflix. It was nowhere on YouTube. So we kind of started to look at some of those kind of, you know, more questionable websites, but uh, we were very wary of it. And we ultimately ended up not watching it. Um, he, he, he found one later and he linked it to me, but by then the moment was gone, so we didn't really see it. I particularly that 10 minute like segments are boring so you gotta keep finding the next segment and they're not usually in order on YouTube. And and you can't yeah. switch through tabs so fast like you can when you're watching like two minute videos or when you're doing it on your like TV or whatever, then you're like, okay, and it has your attention for like the entire half hour. Well there is a new thing on YouTube where you can all put it in a playlist so it automatically skips to the next ten minute video. Hmm. So you could technically watch an hour long video, but I've never been in that much need of a movie to do that, like uh, looking for websites to find it. Yeah, it's much easier to just have like a full movie than to have to go and like connect 10 different parts. But uh, I've actually once, um, my, one, of my, one of my favorite documentaries is Truth in 24. Um, and again, I, I didn't want to buy it on iTunes or anything. I think it's free on iTunes like since I've done this, but that's beside the point. And um, I found all, I think 13 parts of it on YouTube. Uh, the quality was pretty crappy, but you know it's free. So what I did was I downloaded each of the videos, um, kind of put them on a single playlist, and if I want to watch the entire movie in sequence, I could just um, I kind of compiled it for myself, and I could just watch it on Windows Media Player or whatever. It's just as good, I'd say. Okay, great. Listen, our time's one, pretty much up. Can I ask one oh, more? One more. Okay. All right. So let's say you did not have TV. All right. You only had computers. Uh, talk to us about what do you like, Hulu, Netflix, YouTube? Do you ever go to the cable company's website and watch video, like Xfinity? What do you like and don't like about just online video? Well, um, the thing is that whenever I watch, like I want to watch a show online, I would probably do it on Hulu. And um, then maybe YouTube if it's not available on Hulu. But the problem with Hulu now is that like it used to be really convenient to use. You know, um, they had a lot of shows. They would update it fast. There were barely any ads. But now like you have to wait a certain amount of time before you can watch a video, uh, unless you're like a Dish Network cu- customer or something like that. And um, also now the ads have increased. Like I know like a few years ago when I was using it, um, they had. Either you could either watch one two-minute advertisement at the beginning of the video, or you could watch like three 30-second advertisements throughout the video. And now it's you could either watch like a five-minute advertisement at the beginning, or you could watch three one-minute uh, ads spread out three times throughout the video, which is basically just like watching it on TV. So um, I used to watch Hulu, but I've I haven't done it anymore. I, I, would, I mean, you might as well just watch it on TV. First, I would use Netflix um, because it's, I think it's simplest. You just type in the TV show and then it comes up. Um, but sometimes Netflix doesn't have everything, so then I would go to Hulu. Okay. Yeah, I've wanted to watch a TV show before, but I've never in that much of a desire to pay for the Hulu thing. And to watch the full thing, sometimes I need the Hulu account. I'm not, I'm not going to pay to watch a TV show and I can get it for free on TV. I'm kind of cheap, so I just wait for the show to come on <laughs> and I record yeah, the next episode of it. Okay. Anybody else? Nine. All right. So, oh, I've got one to ask. Okay. Um, Kathleen and I spoke about this offline. I think she might have alluded to it in her presentation, but production versus consumption. Um, you guys, how, I'm curious, how many of you guys produce content? As, as, and, and what's your proportion of production versus consumption? you know, as far as hours spent? I spend two hours a day producing YouTube videos. I used to not do any, but I mostly, I consume more than I produce, even though I spend a lot of time on YouTube instead of like Facebook 
because mostly I just chat on the phone, like I hold a conference call, instead of talk, uh, typing to people on uh, Facebook. So I'm talking to them and like either producing or watching a YouTube video and then occasionally I'll just check Facebook statuses because I don't post very often, I just read what everyone else has to say. Yeah, I definitely consume more because I don't think I've ever created a YouTube video. I just, I don't know, I just haven't wanted to. I've created several, I've created several uh, YouTube videos using um, Adobe Premiere and I, I used to be like really into it. It used to be, um, I, I guess like a hobby of mine. I really enjoyed it. But even then, even like it's height of my interest in that hobby, um, how much I paid attention to, what, to how other people made their videos far outweighed how much I invested in my own. So. Go ahead, lean in. Yeah, no, go ahead. They'll figure it out. I think that people, like kids my age, like me personally, like, we you spend more time like watching videos rather than producing because people don't, they don't want to watch your videos if you're just like some random high school. They want to watch like like Ray William Johnson and like Philip DeFranco who have like millions of views and they're really funny and they have like jokes and stuff. And like if you're people like us, like okay, who are you? Why are you funny? Like I'm just gonna leave and go watch someone famous. Well, think about Ray William Johnson. He started as a high schooler that no one knew. Okay. And same thing with Timothy Delaghetto and Nigga Higa and a, a bunch. So. Right. <laughs> okay, great. Well, listen. Um, one parting question: If you could, if you could meet anybody from the technology industry, alive or dead, uh, who would it be? Just fire it off real quick. Mm. Steve Jobs. Okay. <laughs> who else? They don't really care that much about the people from the technology industry. Is social does social networking count? Oh, the Mark Zuckerberg is that what you mean? Yeah, him or Tom from MySpace because no one really gives him as much credit. <laughs> okay. Anybody else? Hmm. Well, all right then. I stumped you. Yeah, I, uh, there are my a lot job of is I'd done like here. There's finally... more than one. Sorry, more there than. There are one. a lot of people I'd like to meet, but there is more than one. Rattle them off, then. Let's hear it. I can't name them all. It's a lot of the biggest YouTubers that you really need to meet. Top three, then. Ryan Higa, Ray William Johnson, Syndicate Project. Wow. Okay. There you have it. Everyone, a big round of applause for yes. these brave souls. Smosh would be good, too. Yes.